This is your brain. You didn't need me to tell you what was on the screen because you already recognize that what you're seeing right now is that of a human brain. But what if you weren't able to recognize even the simplest things that you've learned as a child? What if the memories you have accumulated over the years slowly started fading away and you were unable to create new memories within your brain? Tragically, this is the case for about 3 million Americans every year. People oftentimes say you don't know what you have until it's gone. And that's the same with the concept of memories. Memories make up who we are. Our mistakes help us learn and become better people. And our great memories help us remember the good times in life even when we're struggling. But memory loss can very well happen to us in our old age. This is the case with conditions like senile dementia, also called Alzheimer's disease. Within your brain, there are many different cells called neurons which serve the purpose of creating thoughts and just making you function as a person in general. But sometimes when you grow old, there are certain proteins that interact with your neurons in a way that isn't necessarily normal. And this buildup of proteins can cause plaques and tangles within the structure of the brain that slowly causes it to physically decay. And this is the case with Alzheimer's, which just so happens to be the most common cause of dementia. Having dementia can be a very disabling condition because it in and of itself is a memory disorder and can cause changes to one's personality and make it very hard for the person to reason. Now reading the textbook definition of Alzheimer's and dementia is one thing, but experiencing it is something different entirely. The purpose of this video is to help people empathize more with the condition as well as to understand a little bit more as to the experience of what it's like to have Alzheimer's or memory loss. Take, for example, the artist William Uttermolen. This is William's first self-portrait. He sketched it in 1967 while he was still young and functioning as a person. But around 1995, William was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Since the diagnosis, William decided to do a final series of self-portraits to chronicle the slow decline of his brain. This was created in 1996. It still relatively looks like William, and it's obvious that he still recognizes the way he looks. William would stand in front of a mirror as he would draw and paint his self-portraits. But with each following self-portrait, it becomes evident that the artist himself is starting to not be able to recognize who he is drawing. It even reaches the point where in one of his paintings it just looks like a faceless mesh, where we're just staring at a blank face. It seems that the artist himself has completely forgotten a sense of self and who he was. And nothing portrays this best than his final self-portrait, which seems to be the most terrifying out of them all. It seems to have some elements that resemble that of a human face, with that sort of blurry mess on the left that looks like an ear, a couple of blank dots in the middle that look like eyes, and a little depression on the bottom of the face that looks somewhat like a mouth. The thing that is so terrifying about Alzheimer's is that these self-portraits really begin to show us as the audience how much of his self he really lost because of his brain disease. And you would assume that because he doesn't remember who he was, he'd sort of be at peace with that. But if you look and analyze the sketch a little bit further, you can just see the fear in what's left of William's face. Looking and analyzing through those self-portraits can be very heart-wrenching, especially when you realize the fact that Alzheimer's is a very common disease. Science hasn't necessarily concluded how people get Alzheimer's, but every five years above the age of 65, your risk of getting Alzheimer's doubles, and that makes looking at these self-portraits all the more terrifying, because even though you might not have Alzheimer's now, it may become a reality in your future. The experience of Alzheimer's is not only terrifying, but it can also be very lonely and confusing. And that takes us to the albums Everywhere at the End of Time by the artist The Caretaker. The 
These six albums combine together to tell one unified story, and that is as to the experience of dementia as it advances and becomes more and more severe over time. And as mentioned before, it is divided into six stages, which I believe is completely intentional. See, dementia advances over the course of several years. And when I saw that there were six stages, I instantly thought that each stage was its own year. So what do each of these mean? Well, if we listen to each stage, they seem to play music in a different sort of tone. The first stage seems to be the most innocent, where it plays an old-fashioned type of music. The music in this album is supposed to symbolize thoughts in the brain. So the fact that the music is ordered and sounds fairly beautiful is supposed to be an artistic depiction of what the mind is like before dementia settles in. Stage 2, the subject with dementia starts becoming aware that they have dementia. They seem to be experiencing that first stage of grief. Denial. And as you listen to the music, there is something just slightly off about the music. The music becomes slightly more confused, but it's still very much music that you're listening to, and it's easy to make out the sounds that you're hearing. Now this becomes a little bit harder in stage 3. By this point, the memory loss has advanced a little bit more and has become what I would refer to as moderate dementia. For instance, in this stage, the pitch is really different from how it was at the beginning stages. It has a little bit more of a sinister tone, and it can really bring up feelings of anxiety to those listening to it. I myself experienced this when I listened to the whole third stage. The interesting thing that I noticed about this stage is every so often it would play a song and out of nowhere the song would instantly stop. And another song would take its place. And to me this signified that the brain was slowly settling into a sense of disorder. Where in the first and second stage the songs were more ordered and structured, the songs are slowly becoming more and more distorted as with the thoughts of a person with Alzheimer's. The fourth all the way through to the sixth stage are referred to as the post-awareness stages. Now this means that the person with dementia and Alzheimer's is no longer aware of their surroundings and their environment in general. And this has really become evident when you listen to the music. Take for instance this audio clip from the fourth stage. What instruments are those? Like, what are we listening to right now? It seems that there are a lot of sounds, and we are aware of these sounds, but then at the same time, they're not coherent or understandable enough for us to explain what we're listening to. And this is supposed to be an artistic depiction of someone with Alzheimer's not even being able to recognize the own thoughts going through their head. Because the dementia has advanced enough, causing the neural pathways within the brain to degrade and atrophy so much that the person is unable able to be aware of the simplest things around them. The fifth stage has this similar theme of it being more confused than actual music. But then again, this album is supposed to be more of an experience, making the listener feel as if they themselves are losing their memories and their own sense of self. This fifth stage, like the fourth stage, is confusing. Except this time, there is more room for confusing and horrifying sounds. Now the sounds themselves may sound creepy, and given the fact that this stage is about an hour and a half long, makes the experience of listening to it all the more terrifying, since you have such a long exposure to the horrors and confusions of not knowing what is going on.
The sixth and final stage seems to be the most terrifying of them all. Before we could make out some sounds every so often, but it seems with stage six, the artist wants the audience to listen to different types of white noise. And this is supposed to depict the experience of not really having any more memories or thoughts going in your brain. It is truly terrifying to listen to. And stage six ends with a very dark and sinister tune before it goes completely silent for an entire 60 seconds. One thing that I noticed while listening to this album is over time it plays the same tune over and over, but each time the tune repeats, something about it is just different. Now we can't talk about this album without also talking about its album art. The covers for each six albums are paintings and beautiful depictions of a really dark and sinister topic. If you look at each of the album covers, you notice that there's something there. It looks familiar, but then at the same time, you can't necessarily recognize what you're looking at. Now, I have my own theories for what each of these album covers could be depicting, but I feel like art pieces like this are really meant for the viewer to interpret for themselves. And the only interpretation that I feel like is worth mentioning is the one that I have for the sixth and final album. It seems to be a picture of a blank canvas, which is supposed to symbolize what the brain of someone with Alzheimer's at those final stages is supposed to be like. Their brains at this point have been so taken over by the memory loss and the dementia, and the structure of their brain has atrophied so much that it can be compared to a blank canvas. And the only things that seem to be going through the mind at this point seem to be that of static. Thank you guys for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching this sort of content because I really, really love making it and I'm afraid my channel might be taken over by videos like this. I don't know, I just really like talking about these sort of psychological subjects and I cannot wait to make my next video because it's on a subject that absolutely blows my mind. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Send it to your friends, dude. This is... Oof. See you in the next video.